Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn, bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools. And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well our family run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly warm hearted individuals all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your mates, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there. Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favorite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favorite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos, and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. In need of a crafting fix... There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433. And for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. 
And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Hi, I'm Sam from Adventures in Crafting. I'm a craft and crochet teacher based in Tring in Hertfordshire. Since lockdown, I've moved all of my classes onto Zoom, so I now have customers from all over the country. I teach lots of crafts, but crochet is my specialism. I became passionate about crochet when I was pregnant with my fourth child and in desperate need of some me time. Crochet became my sanctuary and I've crocheted every day since then. I'm a qualified teacher and eight years ago I began teaching crochet. I love sharing my passion with other people. I design patterns, sell kits and teach lots of classes. My classes range from beginners to next steps, specific makes and clubs. I also like to design crochet alongs. My most recent one was my Autumn Granny Square crochet along, which resulted in me designing this allotment jumper, which I love to wear when I'm out gardening and looking after my chickens. <laughs> my crochet tip for you is to enjoy it. Crochet should be about taking part in a hobby that brings you pleasure. My claim to fame is that I met Kirsty Allsop at the Handmade Fair and I gave her one of my crochet sunflower brooches. I'm so excited to be taking part in Yarn Lane and I hope you'll enjoy my demonstrations. Hello, welcome to Yarn Lane. We are the only shopping channel in the UK, totally and utterly dedicated to everything yarn, whether it be crochet or knitting or macrame or whatever. So welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm going to start the show by taking you to our website, which is www.yarnlane.com. You can, there you go. You can, if you want to watch what's available today, you click on watch the show live. And then just scroll down the page there and everything. Now, you'll think, first of all, what are they doing selling fabric? Well, I'll tell you all about that in a minute. And those scissors, they appear every day, don't they, if you watch us regularly. If you scroll down the page, you will see... Oh, they're lovely, those, uh, those crochet hook sets there. Anyway, look, 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 grass. Look at that gorgeous bag. Look at that. I love it. I love this. When I saw the picture of Sam and her family all holding these in on her social media, I just thought they are gorgeous, aren't they? So there's the grass one. Then we've got the sky. Field. Oh, is it called sky? Field of sunflowers. They're all called field of sunflowers but that's the sky one. Then we've got the acorn. You see, I don't know how you're going to choose because the colours are lovely, aren't they? That's Hannah's favourite so far. Then we've got, oh, now there's two on that picture. You don't get the blue one, you just get the orange one. That's bonfire. And then is there one more? There is, isn't there? Uh, conquer. Oh, no, that's not, oh, no, hang on. You won't let you click on the image, but I'll show, we've got them all here. We've got them all here anyway. There's everything. Now, people are already buying them and checking out. The reason the fabric is there is you need half a metre of fabric to line the bag with. So we've got those fabrics coming up during the hour. So let's uh, say hello to Sam Sabido. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. Ages, Hi. ages, ages. Now, I saw, I was just watching your film then, and... Um, Kirsty's doing another Christmas one, isn't she? Because they put an advert out for people yes, to go I on a Christmas that. one. Yes, I saw that. Yeah, there. yeah. <laughs> right. These are, as with all your all your projects, these are totally and utterly gorgeous. Thank you. All you have to do is decide which colourway you want to go with. So if I just go before we do any um, crocheting or anything like that, because it's based on a granny square, it's very very easy. Let me go through the different colours. So I'm going to. Oh, do you want me to start in a particular order, Hannah? Okay, grass is the most limited one now. So grass is on your side, isn't it? Yeah. Right, so in grass, I won't get everything out, but you get everything you need, right? So you get all of your yarn. I'm going to have to get all... Oh, what's that? Is that put it Stuffing for your little mouse. <laughs> That's for your mouse. Uh, yarn, yarn, beautiful colours, look. Forest, mustard... Uh, these haven't got names on them because they've been round specially for you. But you get the handles, you get your instructions, and you get the magnetic clasp, and you get the little hook to put your mouse on. It is a mouse, isn't it? Yes, that's yeah, it. Yeah, mouse. That's something you thought Bumblebee yeah, then, no, mouse. mouse. <laughs> the only thing you don't get is your crochet hook. 
And what size crochet hook do you need? Four millimetre. Four millimetre crochet hook. So that's your grass colourway. And that is the one, have you got a picture of the grass one there? Just wait for it to come down. There it is. Isn't it lovely, beautiful? That's the one that we've got the least amount of stock of now. So if you want that one, you need to check out on grass, right? Next one, Han. Sky next, which is the blue one, which I've got. This is lovely, blue and yellow together. Threw me a bit then because the first colour I saw was brown. Um, oh, it's called stone wash. Yeah. That's a strange one. Yeah. I thought I was going to say denim or me something. Too. Plus your mustard. Uh, and you've got in there all your handle and everything like that. Your colour, beautiful, beautiful yarns. $29.99. There it is. That, now that picture doesn't do it justice, I have to say. No offence to your photograph. No, no. I, yeah, I need to I'm just going to get it course. off the shelf because it's yeah. beautiful. <laughs> Ooh, it's beautiful. <laughs> this one, look. Look, how gorgeous is that? <clears throat> so you get everything you need, everything you need to make that, apart from the half metre fabric to line it with, which I'll take you through in a second. You get the magnetic clasp. You get, this one hasn't got it on, but you get the, the yarn to make the little mouse and you get the, um, you don't get the scissors, but you do get the, the lobster clasp and everything like that and the little ring. All that comes in it. $29.99. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that is the sky. What's next then? I've got, oh, that's grass. Sky. Acorn next, which is Hannah's favourite, I seem to remember. Here we go. So this has got you mustard. Oh, that's a lovely colour, isn't it? Oyster. That one's called oyster. And everything else. I don't need to get everything else out for you there. $29.99. And that's what you can make with this one. Look, isn't that lovely? You don't get the scissors, obviously, but you get everything else. So what colour have we not done yet? I've got conquer. Conquer is next. So again, I'm not going to get them all out. I just want to see what colour. Oh, this is a lovely colour. This one is Shiraz wine. It's a wine, isn't yes, it? Wine. Yeah. <laughs> it's lovely, isn't it, that colour? So you get enough to make the whole bag in there. The only thing you have to add to it is half a metre of cotton to make your lining, which you can either buy from a stay or you might have in your stash, right? And there's one more, isn't there? Have we done all five? Oh yeah, one more. Bon, uh, what have we not done? Oh yeah, I thought we'd done this one. Here you go, here's this one. The bonfire one. Lovely colour. So again, you get everything in there and I'm just going to get the orange one out to see what colour the yarn is. Handles are in there, everything. It won't be called orange, Elliot. Have a bit of romance about you. Flame. Flame, the colour. That's it there. Obviously only the front one. I've got it here, actually. Look. Look. Have you got a favourite colour? No. I, every time I make one, I think it's my favourite colour. <laughs> so, <laughs> at the moment, it's conquer because I finished that late last night. <laughs> oh, OK. Then. Oh. Right. OK, then. So, at Sam Tabito's here. Let's say hello to Sam Tabito. Um, I, I love all of your designs, but this... Thank oh, we're not you. coming to you. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Right away. Looking all lovely. <laughs> um, right, 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 right. So, inspiration, how, what, where, why? Well, just loving the idea of doing, uh, following on from the daisy bag, which was really popular, yeah. loving the idea of doing another flower bag, and obviously with it being very autumnal out there at the moment, we thought sunflowers. The thing is, so. we, we said this yesterday, we've never thought of sunflowers as being autumnal, yeah. Hannah and I. Okay. And it was only when all this fabric started arriving with pumpkins and yeah. autumn colours and sunflowers on it. Because <coughs> my sunflowers totally and utterly dead now, my garden. <laughs> I guess they're more late summer in a way, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, but, but, yeah, yeah, but tumble, heading into, they're yeah. all in the shops yeah. at the moment. And yeah, so I've got a massive one growing in my garden, oh, which is lovely. I'm just so, amazed the way they follow the sun. I, I my know. Heads follow the sun round. Well, yeah. not they've had much sun to follow this no, summer. But, but yeah, it's So lovely. really lovely idea. Are we talking beginner, intermediate? What, what kind of... So I think if you can 
I will show you all the stitches today as usual, but yeah. if you can crochet, and like, as in if you've done a chain or a granny square, if you've done any of my other projects, this would be fine. Right, okay um, then. So if you're absolutely totally brand new to it, there are some more challenging stitches in this, so you okay. would need to watch the tutorials, the okay, YouTube then. tutorials. <coughs> and a lot of people who do knitting and crochet can't do sewing. Yes. Are we frightened by the lining? No, this one is very straightforward. So if you did the daisy bag, this is way easier than the lining for that. Oh, okay. It's then, literally perfect. just a piece of fabric folded in half oh, and then okay. cut around. So, okay, and perfect. if I can do it, you can, because I'm not a confident sewer, as I've said before. Brilliant. But, so what do you want to show us today? So shall I, st I'll, I'll start with the actual granny square. Yep, please. So you're going to be starting with your sunflower so you start with the sunflower in the center sometimes with these three-dimensional squares people think the flowers are added on I did I was about to say yeah to yeah often people yeah. just presume that's how it's done but this is actually begun by making the sunflower and I've got one here you so you'll, you'll build up towards having a sunflower like that yeah and then you add your granny square to that oh, wow. so you add a granny square okay. framework to that Sort of saves yarn enough because if you were yeah. making the sunflower and the granny square exactly. and then sewing on top, you've got all the bits yeah. you're not going to see, haven't exactly. you? Exactly. Okay, so where do we start? So then? we start as usual in the centre, and oh, I've left that attached to that, so let's just chop that off. Okay, so you're going to start with a chain as we normally uh -huh. do for the granny square. How many? Four. Four in the air. <laughs> exactly. So you put your slip knot on your hook, and then you're going to do four chains. So you've got a little chain like that, uh -huh. and then you put your hook through the very first chain that you made, which is the one that's next to the knot. Uh -huh. And it's fine just to go under one loop, or you can go under two if you want. And then you're going to get hold of this yarn and put it through that chain and straight through the loop on your hook. So that's your slip stitch. Right. And that makes a tiny little circle, which I've spoken about before. Mm -hmm. And we're going to make all those stitches into the centre of that circle. So if you are new to crochet or, you know, just getting started, it's a really good idea to mark the centre of this circle with a stitch marker. So Is it obvious? Where it, oh, yes, so you're putting it out there. But never be afraid to give it a really good um, sort of pull. So look, I'll just stretch it out here and find the centre of the circle. So if you would give it a good pull, you should be able to get your finger through there. Yeah. Put your stitch marker in if you're not sure. And that just marks where all of the set stitches for the first round are going to go. So sometimes when you started making the first few stitches, yeah. you lose track of where that centre is. Okay. I don't think I've got that. What Hannah's just put in, the quick stitch markers. I've got a different one here. Are they um, Hang on, one there. No? God, still. Show you still. Might have fallen on the floor. <laughs> oh, there, you go. there it is. That's the start one there. The one I've got is a Knit Pro. Ending 92, yes, that's fine. Okay, <laughs> that's it there. Is that the one you're using? Is that the kind you're using? Just now? exactly like that, like Perfect. a little safety pin. Lovely. So they lock when, they, when you've put them through. Really useful for everything in crochet, mm -hmm. so. Okay, so we're going to start this round by making some popcorn stitches, which is one of my favorite stitches. Okay. And popcorns are really textural. So if I just show you on this flower, uh -huh. so this is how <laughs> <laughs> you get... Can't see it. Can you, yeah, I don't know if you can see or not, but that's how you get that bumpy texture. Yes. That's, so those, each of those sort of bubbles is yeah. a popcorn stitch. Perfect. So that's how you get the um, bumpy texture, like obviously the seeds in the yeah. centre of the sunflower. Julie says, hi, Sam, you look very glamorous today. Oh, thank I told you. you. Everyone's <laughs> mentioned she's coming. <laughs> hair done, new um, frock, everything. Oh, thank you. Right. <laughs> okay, so you're going to chain three. That's your pretend first treble. Yeah. And then this is the beginning popcorn. So oh, as usual, all of the um, stitches, there's descriptions in my pattern. Right. So if you've not done these stitches before, there's a stitch guide at the beginning of the mm -hmm. pattern. So you're going to put three trebles in there. So just as normal, so for a treble it's yarn over, into the ring, pull the yarn back through, gives you three loops on your hook, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. Right. So one more. So, so far I've done a chain three and three trebles. Mm -hmm. So just three, chain three and three normal trebles. So to, for the popcorn part, I'm going to take my hook out of this loop here. So you can stretch it up a bit if that makes you nervous. Yeah, Take Elliot got very nervous and he did a sharp intake of breath <laughs> when he did that. <laughs> and then you're going to find the third of that first three chain you made. So you find that chain there that you made at the beginning. I know uh -huh. it's hard to see in the brown, 
put your hook through the third of those, so the highest one up. One, two, three. Push your hook through there. Grab that loop that you took your hook out of, and you can tighten it now if you want to. And pulling it behind the stitches, pull it through that chain. Right. So it pulls them all together to make a little bobble. So that's your first popcorn. Uh -huh. And then you're going to chain two in the air mm -hmm. and then you're going back into that center circle there where you've got your stitch marker and you're going to make another popcorn so that was the beginning popcorn made with a chain three and three trebles yeah. and this one's going to be made with four trebles I'm just wondering if why has this one got oh because so the first one was a fake exactly treble. that chain three was your sort of fake yeah. treble mm -hmm. so I'm just going into the ring and making four trebles And then again, I've made the four in a row. Mm -hmm. Let me just move that to make sure you can see. It's always hard with a darker colour to see. Yeah. But you can stretch. Again, you're going to take your hook out of that loop. So you can stretch your loop up, take the hook out, and put your hook through the very first stitch. So this time, it's not through the third of the three chain. It's underneath the V of the first treble that you made. So if I just do that, the first treble see. of this section. Of this set of yeah. four, yeah. So if you're finding it hard to find, you can count backwards. One, two, three, four. And it's going to be, and if I just, I just saw that a minute ago. If I just tilt that a bit, you can see where that V is. Yeah. So you're aiming for this gap here, underneath both strands of the V, and then put your hook through the loop you took your hook out of, mm -hmm. and pull it a bit tighter. And then keeping your hook behind the stitches, pull it through that stitch there. And you can see it pulls all of the stitches together and makes a really bobbly effect. It's weird. My mum and my nan, when I was little, used to make me Aaron jumpers. Oh, and right. they used to have like popcorn bobbles, you know, oh, like they do okay. sections yeah. of like cable yeah. and then do yeah. sections oh, of, okay. of. And that's what that reminds me oh, of. Oh, how lovely. Yeah. yeah, it's a really, really lovely effect. I like it a lot. There's a lot of. Um, different textural stitches in crochet clusters and things like yeah. that but this one's my favorite because it's really straightforward you just make your trebles and then you put your hook back in the first one and uh -huh. put it through so you're just going to repeat that all the way around so I'll do one more so it's four trebles in a row so four in a row just normal trebles Take your hook out, put it through the first treble that you made, mm -hmm. grab onto that loop and pull that through. Okay, we're down so to single figures on grass and conquer now. Mm -hmm. Grass and conquer <laughs> in the lead. Oh, brilliant. That's grass. Lovely, that colour. It's isn't interesting it? to see which ones people like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you can never, you can never ever tell. No. You can never tell. You can't Anyways, lose, they're all yeah, lovely. Yeah. Okay, so once you've, you've I've, what you'll do is you'll continue that until you've got your six little popcorns. Where in it, but at that point, it'll look a little bit like a star shape. Right. So if I just show you here, this one, oh, you can see. Oh, it looks like yeah. a yeah, little flower. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. So you've got a lot, it's very thick. <laughs> There's a lot of texture to yeah. it. Um, so you've got six little popcorns and six chain two spaces there. So that's all written in the instructions. And as I said, you've got a description of how to make the stitches too. Mm -hmm. So that's your first round. But then you're going to do a second round of popcorns. So in brown again. In, in brown yeah. again, yeah. So this one's a little bit harder. So if I just show you here, look, you've got not just a centre round, but a second round of popcorns. Right. Um, and so... What I've done is, as I've shown you here, I've finished one round and I'm going to just pick up and show you how Why to do the next round. Why is it more difficult then? Because you're just going to work into two different places to make your popcorn. So you're making popcorns and chain twos again, but we're going to increase it so that we end up with 12 popcorns this okay. round. So you, uh, what I'll do is I'm going to take out my slip stitch actually and just show you that when you get to the end of this first round and you've done your six popcorns, uh -huh. you're then going, you've done your last chain two and you're going to slip stitch into the back of this first popcorn you made. Yeah. So what that's just to secure it all together. Just to secure it? it all together, exactly. So with the popcorns, they're really they're lovely and bobbly, and you've got this sort of texture to the top of them that's pushed forward. So when you come to slip stitch it, make sure you put your hook behind. You don't want to go into the top of it because that will flatten it. Right. So leave the texture there. Put your hook in that gap that's behind. Right. 
pull through and through the loop on your hook to slip stitch it. So okay. that's how you slip stitch it all together without losing that nice integrity of all those stitches. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're going to continue on making these popcorns. So chain three, and then three trebles in the same place as you slip stitch. So mm -hmm. it's that gap there. So this is the beginning popcorn again. Uh, Claire says, oh, nice popcorn stitches to make sunflower <laughs> seeds. Glennie says, hello. And Lo says, have I missed Tunisian crochet? Yeah, we've done it a couple of times, Lo. Just have to come on uh, YouTube. Okay, so I'm just joining on. Ignore this bit. This is me just joining, joining the new colour. Yeah. Okay. So as before, <coughs> exactly the same as before, take your hook out, put it through the third of the three chain, grab that loop and put it through. So that's one popcorn made just exactly the same as before. Uh -huh. And then you chain two and you're going to work this time into that chain two space you made. Right. Which if I just do mm -hmm. that, you can see it there. Yeah. Okay. And again, going back now to proper popcorn. So it's going to be four trebles in a row. Take the hook out, hook through the first one into that loop and put it through and then chain two. So the only difference with this round is because we're doing an increase, we want to end up with more bobbles, uh -huh. you then go into the top of the popcorn. When I say the top, it's really the back, think back. Yeah. So it's really simple because just pull at your popcorn and you'll see this gap here and that's where you're going to put your four trebles. Right. So the only difference with this round, it's a little bit trickier because you're also, as well as going into chain two spaces, Get into the back of the popcorns. Yeah. So I'll just. It's not that difficult. Not though. that hard, is it really? Right. <laughs> it's just a change. There you go. So that just shows how you build it up uh -huh. as you go around. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And then. And that creates another round. Another round, exactly. So that you can see you've finished your in centre of your mm -hmm. sunflower. It's very, it is like you're right, it is very textural, it is very thick, isn't it, compared really to most granny squares? It's really thick, yeah, squares, if you think about a sort of flat granny square, traditional one, it's, it, I mean, it's, yeah, it uses a lot of yarn for that reason, because yeah. you're putting a lot Oh, there's plenty it. of yarn in the kit, Plenty of yeah. yarn in the kit, plenty. Okay. Right, where are we going next, then? Should we go on to the petals? Yes, please. Okay, so once you've finished your centre, next part is the petals, and what will happen is, where you've done your... Yeah, all the petals are the same colour on all the bags, all the, aren't they? Yeah, yeah so it's the only sunflower, the background that exactly. changes. Exactly, yeah. so sunflowers are exactly the same on every bag. It's just the background that yeah. changes. So where you, if I turn it over, I don't know if you can see, because you've got this sort of chain framework of yeah. chain two spaces. Yeah. So that's what we're going to work into now. So And is that on the back or the front? You work from the front, so looking at the front of yeah. it. But if you're not sure where they are, it's quite useful to turn it over and then right, you can spot okay, them. But yeah. You al always work right, from, from the, the front, front with, with yeah. crochet, unless told otherwise. So you're going to put your hook into the chain two space. Does it matter which one? Any one, okay. any one at all, into that hole there, any big hole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you're going to pull the mustard colour, pull a loop of that through, so you've got a loop coming through, yeah. and then just make one chain to secure it. And that's how I always join my colours. That's right. just joining the colour. Yeah. So we haven't done any creating yet, it's just <laughs> creating joining a stitch up, yeah. yet. Now you chain five. Right. So this chain five is obviously a long chain. Okay, we're not doing popcorns anymore. We're not we? doing popcorns anymore. We're now moving on to treble, treble clusters. Right, no, that's fine. I've done that before. Yeah, treble, we treble have cluster. done those yeah, before. Yeah. So they're really fun. So don't be put off by the long no. name. No. So you've got your chain five. And yeah. then for a treble treble, so with in crochet, this is UK terms, you've got your treble, mm -hmm. which is what I was just doing to make my popcorns with, a double treble, which right. is a bit bigger, and this is a treble treble, so it's going to be a really tall stitch. Right. So for a treble treble, you put your yarn over your hook one, two, three times. Right. So that can be, if you um, are finding it hard for them to stay in place when you then try to go into the chain, just put your finger on top like that. Right. Go into the space you made your chain in, pull the yarn back through, so you've now got five loops on your hook. Yeah. Yarn over, come through two, yarn over, come through two, 
yarn over, come through two. So just yeah. like you do with the treble, yeah. till you've got two left. Now, if you're finishing your treble treble, you'd go through these two as well. Yeah. But because we're doing a cluster, we're going to leave those two there right. and start another treble treble. You've got a big hole in the middle. Don't worry. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, if you look carefully at the petals, they've all got that. But once you've put it together, oh, yes, you yes, don't yes. notice. Ignore me. Yeah. So then you've got yarn over three times. You're starting another Again, treble yeah. treble. But through the hole. Through the hole. Pull the arm back through. Yeah, five on. Oh no, yeah, hang on. Well, you've got, got now. you've got an extra one because you've left those. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah haven't yeah. finished that last one. So yarn over through two, yarn over through two, mm. yarn over through two. Leaves three right. on your hook, and then so this is because it's a cluster. Yarn over through all three loops, and with a so with a cluster, you're joining your stitches together at the top. So you finish it by coming through the last part of right. all of them. Right. Yeah. And then you've got to go down the other end side of the petal now. Exactly. Yeah. So then you chain five. And then you're going to slip stitch back in that same space. Oh, that's it for the outside. And that is oh, the petal okay. dum. So if you're reading the pattern and you're fairly new to crochet, it might sound overwhelmed, but it's actually really that's simple. That's easier than the popcorn. Yeah, exactly. And just, you know, you've got this whole page, if you are new to crochet, with all of the stitch descriptions on. Yeah. So don't be put off by, I mean, in fact, it's always really exciting learning new stitches. Yeah, and also like I like this. the fact that you write in brackets, there should be now five loops on. So yes. you know go if you're going to do it and you've only got four, you know you've done something exactly. wrong. You're not carried on exactly. and then realise so yeah. Go through those if you're not sure, step by step. Mm -hmm. So then you chain two. Yeah, because you're going on to the next petal. Exactly. Through the hole. <laughs> exactly. I could do this. You could. Then you chain five. <laughs> yes. <laughs> She's writing patterns now. No, it has to be the next hole, Elliot. It can't be any hole. It has to be the next <laughs> hole along, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Skip over the popcorn. Yeah. Into the next hole. Oh. Do a slip stitch to secure hold it. Hold it. Then chain five. Yeah. And then after your chain of five, you're doing another treble, treble cluster. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why have they given it such a difficult name? Because it is frightening. It's kind it, exactly. It? It's kind of the combination of two stitches. So you get lots of clusters. You get treble clusters, double treble clusters, yeah. and where because it's already got a long name, treble treble. Yeah. It sounds um, yeah even more. So it's a two yeah. treble treble cluster, technically. Yeah. <laughs> And so one, let's do one more of those. So I've started, I've done my chain five, I've started one treble treble, left the last two loops on the hook, and that's what you do whenever you make any cluster. Yeah. Leave the last two and start your second one. Okay, I'm going to ask now what mm -hmm. might seem like a really stupid question. I know there's no stupid question. If you've done five chains for the first part of your petal and you do five chains for the last part of the petal, why can't the two bits on the middle, rather than being treble trebles, be five chains as well? They could be, but it, we won't get this nice pointy bit. Oh, hang on, let's have a look. So, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So, wait, so what the tr a cluster does is it brings it all together, together into a at point the at the top, okay. and that's what gives it the petal yeah. shape. Okay. Yeah. I just but have you, to ask. Yeah, yeah, no, no, because it, you're creating four Spoke, sort of spoke, yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah four but bits, it's the cluster yeah. at the top which brings them together in the petal and makes it the petal shape. So it'd be a rectangle if you did what you said, which, oh would, right. be, which would be fine. But <laughs> <laughs> My sunflowers got <laughs> rectangle petals. rectangular petals, petals on yours. <laughs> right. You're designing crochet now, yeah, <laughs> hardly. <laughs> right, go on then, chain five, yeah, and then slip stitch in the same place. So, really straightforward. You're doing a chain two, slip stitching in the next hole, and then repeating that. And so you'll go all the way around the outside doing the same thing. Yeah. And that will give you 12 little petals. Right. And then, I th so the two chains in between create that little bit between the two, the between each petal. So it's going to give you a finished yes. like, kind of frame to it the popcorn. Is, isn't which it is, which you then use n for the next round. Oh, so it's there for a purpose, so it's not there just there for, for prettiness. It looks yeah. nice, it moves you around the work, but also it gives you something that you need to use for the next round. Okay. So, Hannah, what was that, sorry? Acorn, single figures of acorn as well now. There you go. Right. Okay. So let's just move that away. Right, nice message from Sheila while you're getting that next bit out there. <laughs> Going across the bottom here. Hi, Sam and John. Love, love, love Sam's Aww. designs. I've managed to buy a green one today. P.S. See you in Kefalonia. Oh, how lovely. Oh, Sheila from Hampshire. Thank you, Sheila. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Not long now. When do you go? 
I've got, what day is it today? Wednesday. I've got, I've got tomorrow off, then I've got Friday, Saturday, Sunday in here, Monday off, Tuesday, Wednesday here, and then that's it till the end of the oh, month. Oh, how lovely. Oh, no. I've been to Kefalonia, it's lovely. Oh, have you? Yeah. I used to yeah. go to Skopelos when I was younger. Oh, right, but we okay. Have anyway, yeah. right. So. Okay, so this is a, I've finished the first round of petals here, so it shows you what it looks like. Yeah. Don't worry about the fact it's three-dimensional. Obviously, I wanted it to be three-dimensional, but I know some people might be thinking, oh, they're sticking up. We're going to block it. So oh, no, I quite worry. like that. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, when I um, design it, obviously, I think about whether I want things to lay flat or be three-dimensional, but the daisy one was three-dimensional, yeah. so I wanted to keep in keeping with that. So there's a very three-dimensional element to this square. Okay. okay, so if I just show you again on the back, you've got your petals, and between each petal, you've got a chain two gap. Uh-huh. So we're going to use that gap now to make another round of petals, right. to make it even more three-dimensional. So they go between the petals that you've done? Yes, yeah. exactly. So you're going to do a chain two, and then you're going to find the next chain two space, right. which is here. So yeah. it's in between the petal that's in front of you and the following one. Yeah. And you're going to slip stitch in there. And you want these petals to sit behind the previous row. Uh -huh. So just push them forward. You don't have to do that, but it just gets them out of the way for a moment. Yeah. Put your hook under that chain two, grab the yarn. So it's just through the hole underneath the chain yeah, two. Yeah, not yeah. into it, just into the yeah. hole under it. Grab the yarn, put it through there and through that loop. Right. And now you're ready to make another petal. So is that a slip stitch? You just so, there, sorry, yes, it. that was a slip stitch yeah. to hold it, yeah. No, I'm not questioning you. No, no, <laughs> I'm, I'm impressed. It, yeah. And then we're going to do the same, are we? The same again. That, yeah. So chain five. Oh, this is easy, this. Yeah. And then a two treble treble cluster. Uh-huh. So two travel yeah, every time you say that they start singing in there. Travel cluster, travel cluster, two travel clusters. <laughs> so then finish off this cluster. Yeah. I'll just to show you how it sits, and then chain five and slip stitch back in this space. And so you can see it's sitting just behind and in between yeah. these other two petals. Brilliant. And then you chain two again. And this chain two needs to sit behind that next petal. Mm -hmm. And you find the next chain two space. And again, push that other petal forward so you can work it. And then from the front, so always go from the front, under that chain two, and make your slip stitch. So grab the yarn, come back through, and through the loop on your hook. And then chain five. And then a two treble treble cluster. Yeah. The yarn over three there times. They go. They're singing again. <laughs> Into the chain space, pull it back through. Yarn over through two, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. Leave those last two on your hook. Again, start the next one. So yarn over three times. Into that space, pull back through. Through two, through two, right. through two. And then that leaves your last three. So exactly the same as you have been doing. And you can you continue that all the way around, so you've got your second layer of. Yes, yeah, so you end up with two rows. You end up with two that. layers, with yeah. one sitting underneath the other. So uh -huh. that's my finished one. So this one I quickly blocked this morning, just because I wanted to show you the difference between blocked and unblocked. But do you need to block at this point in real life? In real life, no. Okay. Wait till okay. you finish them. You right, can block okay. them whenever you want. I mean, if it makes you feel better, block it. But <laughs> it doesn't need blocking until you've finished your granny squares. Right, okay. So what you do is you go all the way around with that yep. and then you end up with your sunflower. So is that one blocked or not blocked? This one is blocked a bit this right. morning. So if I just put them next to oh, each yeah, other, yeah, yeah. you can see the difference. <laughs> yeah, the one on the right looks like the sunflower in my garden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So don't panic. I, I thought I wanted to show you the contrast because I didn't want anyone thinking, oh, mine doesn't look right because it's all curly. Yeah. Blocking. And yours looked fine until you put it next to the block exactly, one. And then it's like, exactly. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's nice too. You can leave it like that. Mm -hmm. It's very natural, which is exactly what I wanted. Yeah. But yeah. Also, and when I say blocking, I was ironing my dress and I held the iron over it and steamed it. Oh. So okay. So <laughs> no, just steamed it. Literally really. a quick few seconds. Right. Before you go on to the next stage, I just need to recap on okay. the different colours that we're doing here. So Hannah, which colour first? Bonfire. Oh, they've all gone out of order now. Bonfire's here. There you go. That's the orange one, isn't it, Bonfire? That's this one. 
So uh, there you go. You get all the all the yarn that you need. Now, what is the yarn? What's the um? It's King Cole price wise, and it's acrylic, 100% acrylic, <coughs> and it's a double knit. Okay, everything you get in the kit, everything you need, including the handles. Uh, you don't get the scissors, obviously, but you get the, the enough yarn to make the little mouse there. You even get the key ringy thing. You need to buy half a metre of fabric for your lining or just the plain lining. You do get the magnetic clasp, you do get the handles. And it's lovely, isn't it? So that's your bonfire. Bonfire, which goes there, right? Next. Followed by conquer, which is, there are only nine conquers left. Not in the world, obviously, <laughs> just on the show. Uh, there you go. It's the, the kind of um, Shiraz colour. The background is Shiraz on that one. I'll just show you that one very quickly. Elliot's cameras are really playing up today. Oh. Go on then. There you go. <laughs> that one there. Is your conquer. Next. Acorn is next. Very popular, which is the which is Hannah's favourite. This is the one with the lovely oatmeal-y background. There you go. The what, sorry? Single figures on that one as well. Lovely, isn't it? You do need a four millimetre, was it four? Yes. Four yeah. millimetre crochet hook as well. That doesn't come in the kit, but everything else does. Uh, oh, no, Elliot, this, the, the, the thing is, something you... Does that not depend on your tension, Elliot's saying? It's very impressive. Yes, yeah, yeah if you normally... So, basically, the hook size you normally use for a double knit. So, uh -huh. yes, Elliot is quite right. If you normally go up a hook size because your tension is tighter, then use that. Can you hear him? And in the, vice so, versa. Somebody's called him impress, impressive, which he's <laughs> never been called before. And the fact he got that right. Right, next deck, <laughs> Hannah, next colour, please. Grass, which is the green one, which is lovely. The green is beautiful. I'm thinking now the green might be my favourite. <laughs> that one's a grass there. And that's Elliot's favourite as well, but don't let that put you off. It's my favourite, yeah. And then last but not least, we've got Sky. This is lovely, isn't it? Again, you get everything you need. Magnetic clasp. Handles, yarn. The only thing you don't get is the lining of the bag. You just need half a metre fabric for that. Or, or, or the crochet hook. There it is, that's Sky. Is that one in the lead then, Sky? Oh, grass is in the lead now. Grass is in the lead now. Right, okay, let's carry on. Okay. The time, the, 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 this is the trouble with the yarn there now. So <laughs> the time far, flies doesn't by. Doesn't it? Okay, so okay. we've done the sunflower in the middle. Yes, so now you need to put your framework on. So I've got it on the blocking board here. Uh -huh. So um, you're now going to build up the granny square uh, framework, which is quite a solid shape. Right. So this is what we're aiming for. Okay, so what you do for that... Oh, sorry. I'm knocking over my drink. Oh, gin. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, you. You've got your sunflower, and as you remember, we put our chain two spaces behind this yep. round as well. So you're going to find a chain two space. Anywhere. Anywhere, any of them. Put your hook through that space and you join your main colour. So this is where it differs from kit to kit. Okay, yeah, yeah this is where so, you're going to have the colour that you choose. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So pull through a loop of your new colour. Mm -hmm. And then make chain one, just so that joins it. And then you're going to, we're going to be working with treble trebles again. Right. So we chain five. Are they treble trebles or treble treble clusters? They are just treble trebles. Just this treble time. trebles. <laughs> so we've got a chain five. Yeah. And then you're going to do a one treble. Well, actually, you're going to do two treble trebles, but I don't want to confuse you because it's not a cluster this time. So right. yarn over three times yeah. into the space, pull the yarn back through, gives you a five. So the difference is this time we're going to finish it. Right. So then you go. Yarn over, pull through two. Yeah. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And then one final one this time. Oh, yes. Because you finish one. it. Yarn over, pull through two. So that's four times. Right. And then once more. Into your space. So there's four yarn. I, oh, I've just lost it off my hook then. Oh. Try again. Okay, so. Yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. So there's four right. repeats of pulling through the two there. 
Right, so that's because I've got my pretend one of my three at the beginning. So look, you can see how this one's a bit more rectangular. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that's because see the what difference in shape like because we, we haven't done the exactly cluster. we yeah. haven't done yeah. the cluster. So now you do a chain two. We're going to make this into a square now. So that makes a corner. So right. one of our corners of the square, and back into that space with another treble, treble. So yarn over three times into the space, pull it back through, and again I've got my tail in there there. Through two, yarn over through two, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. So uh, you're going to do that twice more. So in this one, you're making, you'll see in a minute, you make the corner shape of it. So then if I just show you there, it's already starting to look like a corner of a square. It'll take more shape as we go. Yeah. Okay, so then, Ahead of you, so you've worked behind a petal. Mm -hmm. If I just show you that there. The next thing you have is a petal in front of you. So you're going to slip stitch into that one and you slip stitch into the top of the cluster. So it's the V at the top there. So hook goes under that V, pull the arm back through and straight through the loop on your hook. So it's just going to hold that petal in place. Right. Then you pull forward the next petal and you've got a chain two space behind it. Uh -huh. And you're going to make three double trebles in there. Okay. Okay. So we've so far we've done trebles and treble trebles. Yeah. For a double treble, you do yarn over twice before you go in. Right. So exactly the same in every other respect. So yarn over twice into that space, pull back through, gives you four this time. Mm -hmm. Yarn over through two, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. So double treble is a shorter stitch. So you can see you've got a treble trebles are longer yeah. and a double treble is slightly shorter, so that's going to make it straight along the edge here. Right. So we're going to do three. Oh yeah, because we have to try and create a shape. Now, exactly. We? Yeah. We're going to try and make this um circle, flower circular shape into a square. Okay, so three of those and then find the top of your next cluster yeah. and slip stitch in there. And then again into the next chain two space. So you, this is probably why they start looking a little bit curled up because yes. I'm pushing them forward all yeah. the time. But don't worry because you can block them at the end. Mm -hmm. So just thinking whether I might have done a treble treble by mistake there. Let's oh take it out. No. <laughs> so yeah. I didn't notice that. It oh must be dear. Yeah. <laughs> so for a double treble, it's yarn over twice into the space, pull back through. What made me think is because I had too many pull throughs. Four <laughs> loops on my hook, yarn over through two, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. Oh, Claire sent a message. <clears throat> Have you had a go at crochet, John? You sound like you understand it well. Yeah, understanding it and doing it are two different things, though, aren't they? I, I'm quite I easy. I think you but... could do it now. Oh, now I've got to work on my tension. <laughs> right. So then that's another set of double trebles there. Uh -huh. You can see it's starting to straighten it up. Uh-huh. And then slip stitch in the Here's next the petal. The and then in the next gap, we're going to make a corner. So we're back to the treble trebles. Right. So yarn over three times into that gap. And this is where, so you just come through. Basically, if you think about when you're doing your treble, your double treble, your treble treble, you think about how many times you have to wrap the yarn over the hook first. Yeah, yeah. And then it just does it for you because you pull the yarn back through and for the treble, the double treble and the treble treble, you just go yarn over through two, yeah. yarn over through two until yeah, they're gone. it just does it for you, doesn't it? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Easy peasy. <laughs> and then because this is the corner now, yeah. you do a chain two, that's going to be a corner space and you go back in with another three treble yeah. trebles. Oh, except I've just, what, a little tip, because I just, it's come off my hook because I haven't freed some of the yarn. I was going to say, uh, if you were at home doing this, <laughs> would your bowler will be on the floor? Mine would be, yeah. yeah, yeah. You can get yarn bowls as well to put it in, but yeah. I let mine roll around the floor, and that does really help with kind of freeing the yarn ready. Yeah, because yeah, you have to keep remembering to unravel it when yes, it's on the table. Yes, if you? you've got it on a surface next to you, you do have to kind of unravel it. I mean, yeah. some people go out the centre of the ball, depending... Um, it depends which brand you're using, but you can take your yarn out of the centre of the ball and then it doesn't have to roll around, yeah. but I tend to go from the outside. So there we've made another corner. 
and then you slip stitch in the next petal. One. Yeah, so I'll just whiz around so I can show you the next yeah, yeah, round. Of course, yeah. And then this, now we're going along doing double trebles. So it's double trebles along the side and treble trebles in the corner. You don't have to go this fast at home. <laughs> no, you don't have to go this fast. <laughs> That's, it. That's it, slip stitch, so three double trebles, slip stitch in the next. You keeping up, Elliot? <laughs> no. That's my not. second double treble. See, I'm unraveling some. That's it. And then again. And then slip stitch in the next petal. And then you'll be on to your next corner. Uh -huh. So you can see that shape of yeah, it there yeah, yeah. already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. coming into the square. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, so this um, round really s shapes it. And then you've just got two more rounds to go where you follow. If you've done a solid granny square before, it just sh follows the rule of a, a solid granny square. Right. So really, we've done the most difficult bit now. So it's sort of quite, I like, quite like when I'm making them. I make, when I'm making them, I make all the centres and then I sit and do this bit. Oh, And I quite you? like, and I finish them off and it feels like you're on the easy bit there. Yeah. What well, might be quite nice if you've got, once you've got the pattern, when at home I'd make all the sunflowers the same colours that but then make all the squares in the background as different colours. That would be fun, yeah. So you do like, like an orange square, work. green square, blue square, an acorn square, whatever. Yes. Yeah, that'd be really lovely. Because then it'd look like pro it'd look like patchwork, wouldn't it? Yeah, so that would be really nice. So what I'll do is I'll stop now because I've got a significant amount done and then I can show you how to go on to the next round. Okay. Oh, got my tail in there, look. No, oh, don't want rogue that. tail, that's it. So what you can do is work over your tails as you go with this project, because there's not many of them anyway. Yeah. So then if you work over them, you can fasten it, you can um, cut them off afterwards without having to weave them all in. Yeah. So there you go, that just gives you an idea, you've got three quarters of that done. Okay. Okay, so then you all have gone all the way around and slip stitched mm -hmm. it. And then you're just going to do another two rounds where you add just two more rows of trebles. Right. So you'll finish off by slip stitching in the top of this chain that we made. So in the fifth of the chain five. So I'm obviously rejoining mine, but you'll just be continuing. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Then you chain three in the air. Pretend first treble. And then you're going to now work under the stitches. So your next stitch is here and we're back to trebles. So right. just yarn over once, under that V, pull the yarn back through, which gives you three loops, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. And then you've got another stitch ahead of you. So mm -hmm. you do the same thing in there. So you're not going through holes this time, you're going through stitches. So now you're going through stitches. Yeah except for when you get to the corners. Right. And if you've done a solid granny square before, you used to work in the corners, and I'm putting three trebles, chain two, three trebles in here. Right. So just into the space made by the chain two, three trebles, then a chain two in the air, and then three trebles. So I'll show you what that looks like. Uh -huh. And so if you've done, I mean, really, we're, we're back on safe granny square territory yeah, now. Yeah, so yeah. we've done this with traditional ones as well. And then it's going to be one treble into every V along. Uh -huh. So you've got three, six, nine, 12 stitches left. So the reason I say that is you need to be careful not to work into the slip stitches that you made in the tops oh, of the petals. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to do one, Lenny says, it's absolutely fascinating to watch. I can crochet, but not all the fancy stitches are much, much slower. This is such a beautiful project. Oh, how lovely. Thank you. Right. Oh, till you drop a stitch. Till you drop a stitch, yeah. OK, so I've done three, and then I've got to the bit where I've slip stitched in the top of the petal. Uh -huh. So if the orange yarn is coming out of the top of the petal, don't work a stitch in there. Mm -hmm. That's your slip stitch. So just go into the next stitch along. So that's a V at the top of an orange post. Uh-huh or main colour, whatever your main yeah. colour is. And you'll see, I'll just do a few more, that this is just continuing to make it into the square shape. And, and did you say there's another row after this? There's um, one more row yeah. after this as well. So 
it makes quite a big square. I think mine were about se uh, 17 centimetres in diameter mm -hmm. when I finished them, once they were blocked. But it makes the sunflower stand out really nicely. Yeah, no, beautiful. So there's one more to go, but you end up with it looking like this. Right. So once you've made them all, I'd really do recommend blocking with this. I mean, you know, it does, it's not, they look fine not blocked. They look nice and natural, but it's quite nice to sort of just block them and push the petals yeah, oh out. Yeah, flat. definitely. So the way I did that is I steamed them with my iron, which is what I always do, but you can block however you like to do it. Bas uh -huh. The basic principle is dampen the work, yeah. whether you wash it, whether you just spray some water on it. I spray it with a spray starch, and then I hold my iron over the top of it, not touching it. What kind of starch? Like, <laughs> like you'd use for stuff. ironing, like you've got um, the best way. Oh, best used, best yeah, best that's oh, best okay, press. Brilliant. That's yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, best way. Something else, isn't it? I can't think what know. it is. <laughs> and, <laughs> we and don't want to know that now. <laughs> <really>. <laughs> So then you hold the iron over the top without touching, just literally about a centimetre or two above yeah. uh, on your steam setting. And then it will make the petals damp and hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so pull them outwards and you'll really see a difference in the arm. And just let that air dry and it will stay in place. When you say air dry, how long do you leave it for? If you've done it with your iron in the way I just said, minutes. Oh, OK. Because you could do three blocks. Could you yeah, put three but on also you time? can pile them up. Oh, of course. So you can yeah, put, yeah, yeah. you know, then you put one on top of this, leave a li few millimetres in between f for the air to get yeah, through. Yeah, yeah, of course. Because you've made it hot with the iron, it's literally minutes. But if, oh, if you've wet it and washed it, yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter however you like to do it, then just, you know, maybe put it in front of a radiator or something. But don't join them until they're completely dried. Right. Otherwise, they'll take the shape of whatever and then And then them. literally, because we're about to run out of time, yeah. you literally just sew them all together. You sew them all together. You double crochet them all together. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, just like we have with other projects. So any of my other shows I've been on, if you have a look, yeah. you'll see me double crocheting together. And then you've got this in the pattern. There's the assembly layout. Um, sorry, just wait for you. That's it. Yeah. So you've got the layout there. And then it, if you want to, you line it. It's not essential, but it does yeah, help get structure. Yeah, if you put peas in there, they'll fall out the <laughs> Exactly, holes, yeah. Um, and when you um, put them together, you can do them right sides together to get a ridge on the inside or wrong sides together to get ridges on the outside. Yes, that's Perfect. exactly When are you right. in next? I'm in on the 22nd in three weeks. I'm doing the autumn wreath. Oh, it won't be with me, I'm afraid. No, you'll be in Kefalonia. I will be lying <laughs> on the beach. <laughs> Hopefully, anyway. Right, quickly, quickly. I've got to really round up very quickly. Right, so, colours. Grass first. Grass, that's the green one. You can go with a picture. Lo a really, really small quantity of the grass left. Please check out, please check out, please check out if you've got grass in your um, basket. Okay. Sky is the next one, which is the one I've got here. Lovely, isn't it? $29.99. Please check out. You need a four millimetre crochet hook and you need half metre of fabric if you do want to um, line it. We've got the fabrics that um, Sam's used there on the website in pre-order underneath. Right, next colour. Acorn, which is the one on the wall. Sorry, I thought we had to seal of it anyway. There you go. There's the acorn one. Which one's your favourite, eh? It's difficult to choose, isn't it? <laughs> then, <laughs> Conker, which is the Shiraz That's one. That's this one, yeah. They're so lovely. There you go, the one at the front there. It's a beautiful colour, that one, isn't it? And then last but not least, Bonfire. Have we got time? Right, I've got the colours for the linings if you want. We oh, okay, go, line, go through them if you want. No, do slate grey first. There you go, slate grey. 349, just need half a metre of that one. Next one, green, there you go. Emerald green, they're all the same price. So now the, they won't be on the pre-order page anymore. They'll be on the show deal page now. Then we've got the half a metre is enough to do this on. Claret. Remember as well, we do have the blocking board as well that you saw earlier. Um, then I've got natural seeded. It's the same. Th it's called natural seeded. It's the same. It's the same fabric. 
And then last but not least, orange. See, I might have put hot tomato with that myself, but there you go. Half metre is ample, £3.49. That's one unit if you're buying on the website. Right, so what, Yarn Lane is back on Friday and Saturday, both with me. I'm not in tomorrow, but I will see you on Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Thank you, Sam. It's always a pleasure. And I'll see you tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock on Sewing Street. Do not be late.